Whoa, that's a really good idea. I thought... Get another Mega Size Zaku. I thought... That'll make a cool gift. I thought... And so here we have another Mega Size Zaku that I'm going to be painting up as a gift for someone. I don't want to spoil the paint scheme or who it's for actually quite yet. I want to keep that a surprise, but this is something I'm going to be working on. It's going to be relatively simple. I'm not going to be like adding any parts or doing any sort of modification to this one. Just build it and paint it and that's it. It's still going to take a while though. These Mega Size kits are very, very large. And I didn't really know if I needed to do another unboxing and review video for this because it's basically the same thing as the one that I already did an unboxing and review for. That was just the regular standard type. This is obviously the Shars version. It's pretty much the same, but there are there's a, a little, 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 little tiny difference. The list price is actually the same for both of them, but this one has a different backpack. This one has the, a different style backpack on it, whereas the regular green version comes with a bazooka. Now, personally, I would have liked to have just the one with the bazooka, but I thought, yeah, it'll be all right. Otherwise, the only real difference is just going to be the, the, the water slides. The markings for this are going to be a little bit different. This one's going to come with special uh, markings for Char. But anyway, both versions of the kit do come with the uh, commander horn on top, so it's really not a whole lot different. Basically, if you really want Char's backpack, then get this one. If you really want a bazooka, then get the regular one. But anyway, here at the top, you can see that it is uh, 365 millimeters tall, otherwise uh, 36.5 centimeters. Very, very big box. Uh, just same stuff here on the side of the box. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually come with an LED or like it's not set up to take an LED for Monowai to actually light up like that. On the bottom of the box here, you can see there's what the kit looks like. Uh, the steps, point one, just the snapping off. It says you don't need any tools, but of course I'll still use some tools anyway. No adhesive, yeah, you don't need to use glue. Uh, it has a little Hobby Japan, Japan, uh, Dengeki Hobby, Hobby Japan, little like magazine featurette thing inside of there. I'm guessing that one's going to be different from the one that came with the regular Zaku, so we'll take a look at that as well. It comes with the part separator, which you can use, but again, uh, it actually is useful. I, I wouldn't recommend that for taking the parts off the runners, but it is very useful for taking the parts, taking the pieces apart if you're going to be doing that like for painting, because the connections on these, I don't know if it's maybe just because of the size, the connections are super, super tight, so pulling the pieces apart is quite tricky if you don't do anything to like uh, cut the the stems of those or anything to to make them easier to take apart also the the parts are labeled with these little icons here which kind of is not really all that helpful but it is kind of cool that they did that uh, there are these little icons there next to the part numbers which will show you like where the part goes in the kit whether it's the head the torso the waist uh, and so on and then here's just showing you all the different colors that it's molded in and then about the water slide decals that are included. On the opposite side, it's highlighting the uh, ratcheted joints in the polycaps used for this. Uh, clear parts there for the mono eye in the visor. I might actually might uh, do without the clear visor part on this one as well. Uh, and then just some um, posing. It's not really the most posable kit. It's kind of just meant to be big and nice looking, but not really the most like articulated thing. And there we go, straight out of the box. 148 scale mega size compared to 144 scale high grade. And then the uh, sample builds from Dengeki Hobby and Hobby Japan there. So we'll take a look at that. List price for these is uh, 7,800 yen. So they're not cheap, but actually that's really not too bad if you can get it at near that price. But they are big and the kit is very heavy. So if you're buying it overseas, chances are you're going to be paying quite a lot more than that just because of how much these cost to ship just because of uh, the size and the weight. So right off the bat here you can see there's our water slide decals. Take a look at those again in a moment. Some other parts here basically just all of our parts. It's kind of cool if you remember from the original build how these parts how they work is they basically kind of the runner you just fold the runner on top of itself and then you just cut the parts off like that and the parts are already connected. Really not all that useful but it's kind of interesting how they did that. Same with the knee and elbow joints work the same way. Here we have our new part for the backpack there, so that's pretty cool. More armor parts. Uh, this does kit does require some seam line removal, so we'll have to do that as well. Uh, but because I've already done it all once before, I kind of know how to do it straight away, and I don't have to spend any time like figuring out the best way to do it or whatever. I may do it a little bit differently from how I did it before. I guess doing it once uh, is the way that seemed right to me at the time, but maybe I can think of a better way to do it now. Anyway, here's our instruction manual. Same box art there at the top on the bottom showing you where all the decals are going to go. I probably will stick pretty close to the original decal scheme on that, but I think I will probably use uh, some new decals. Uh, parts list here on the back. You can see all we're going to have left over is just a few poly caps, and we're going to be using all of the other parts. Otherwise, the construction manual, I won't go through this like showing you every single page, but uh, as I mentioned before, I think when I reviewed the original one or unboxed it, the instruction manual for these is a little bit complicated just because it's, it's all color, which is nice, but 
Uh, because of the way that uh, these go together, how I mentioned how the runners just kind of fit on top of each other, uh, it's a little bit confusing and it just looks a bit of a mess. It's not the uh, the easiest thing to follow visually, but so just make sure you follow the steps closely, pay attention to the guide, uh, and you'll be fine. These kits, while very large, they're not the most complicated. They're pretty similar to like a high grade in terms of their parts complexity. So uh, just because it's very large, don't feel like nervous that it's like really difficult to build or anything. So here we have our like sample magazine thing. Uh, it's kind of uh, one thing, but it's just separated front and back. This side is the Hobby Japan side and this side is the Dengeki Hobby side. So the Dengeki one is just uh, built up in kind of like uh, real type colors, sort of green with some of these old Kind of style markings. It's a shame we didn't get some markings like that included with this. And then on the the Hobby Japan side is this is a really cool diorama. So they usually include some kind of pointers, tips here. So basically this is just kind of going over just regular nub removal, uh, the very basic of basic steps here. So just how to safely remove the nubs there using nippers and knives, and then how to put on the water slide decals, and then how the kit is just going to look up look like uh, just straight out of the box with just the water slides applied. Uh, pretty plain. Definitely a lot of details on there. You're going to want to go in and panel line that. And then we have here Garma's Fate. So a really cool diorama here. This thing has got to be huge just because of how big uh, this thing is. This is by Takuji Yamada. So here's showing a couple of like work in progress photos there. It looks like he just kind of sharpened the points of the shoulder. He made a new hand for that. Just looks like that's probably just scratch built fingers. Uh, for making an open hand like you can see there sort of in the photo. This one I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that. That is uh, just for the front part of the face. Uh, he just separated that part. It looks like he just kind of cut away that part there for the center to make it uh, a separate piece there. So that's a kind of interesting thing I guess. Another little detail, he just added like a little bit of like an inside lip around to the edge of the elbows and the knees, I guess just to make that armor look a little bit thicker on there. And then just changing up a little bit of the details here around the front of the legs as well. I'm not sure, but okay. And then he modified the torso part to make it so it's like bending over like that. This kit does not have the ability to actually bend at the torso. So he just made it just a fixed pose like that, just made it uh, bent permanently like that. It looks like probably just a lot of epoxy putty or something used for that. So anyway, very cool. A couple more pictures of that and then it goes over to the Dengeki side. So let's go around here back to the back. On this side it's showing about panel lining using a Gundam marker uh, and then top coating using some uh, top coat there to give you a different look and then a little bit of masking and spraying it looks like to give you a two-tone effect. Again, a lot of details, a lot of panel lines on this, so it's a lot of opportunities for making that like RG style uh, two-tone colors. And then just uh, some streaking effects using some more different Gundam markers like Gundam weathering markers and stuff for that. So just adding a little bit of detail, some like uh, chipping effect using just a silver marker and then uh, how it's going to look after that after you've done that stuff to the kit and then this custom version real type color version of the Zaku 2 uh, really cool colors like those colors quite a bit very nice very dark green you have these really cool markings around on the kits I really like that one there on the back skirt asymmetrical and that's pretty much it so those are cool uh, ideas there if you want to try to do something like that with your kit but let's get a look at the runners here quickly all right, so first up, this kit does come with a couple of foil stickers. This is basically for going behind the mono eye and kind of inside the head there, just to kind of block some part of the light there, just to make it more black, dark looking inside the head. And then we have our water slides, very nice water slides. We don't often get them in Bandai kits, but fortunately the mega size kits do come with them. Once again, this is one reason why you might want to particularly get this version because it does come with the Shars markings, uh, whereas the regular standard version doesn't come with the special Shars markings on them. So. We've got PC500 here for a very large polycap runner here. I get just very large in size. The polycaps themselves are quite large as well. And this is standard gray. We got two of those. And we've also got two of these little PC7 runners. So it's kind of crazy to think that the same little polycaps that are used in just little petite guy kits are also used in this giant mega size kit. But these are for the uh, piping. They're mostly on the legs. So that's where these are going to be used. So first up, we got runner A. Parts for the size of the head. You will have a seam line right down the middle of the snoot there. Unfortunately, that's uh, not the easiest thing to get rid of, but it's not too hard. We do have our regular uh, head here, part head with the commander antenna. And here you can see we don't have the option of just a regular head. So I think that was just in this section here. So on the original kit, this is a normal green version, you have both of those parts. So you have that option. In this case, if you did not want to use that commander antenna, you'd have to fill that in with putty, uh, sand that down. So 
Carpenter B here in a nice standard gray. This one you can see here is our new parts added for that, or I think maybe just this part. I think for the regular kit, this backpack part was maybe on this side, so that's omitted. In this case, we have this one here. I do like the look of this. I was thinking like, oh, just a different backpack. It's not really worth it. I think I'd just rather prefer the bazooka, but this backpack is pretty cool. I do like the look of this. Uh, has Definitely has that more high mobility sort of look to that a little bit. And then runner C, a couple of black parts here for the center of the torso, some clear parts there for the visor and mono eye, and I think this one is for uh, the camera on the uh, machine gun. And then a clear pink part here for the mono eye there as well, and then our new red part for the backpack. So this is a different red from the whole rest of the kit, so this is the only part of the kit that's in this like kind of standard red color. Then runner D here is our burgundy color, so this is the only runner of this particular color. This is the parts for the skirts and the chest parts and the kind of the stomach part that are in the little bit darker red. It's a pretty nice color, I think, straight out of the box. It's not going to be looking maybe the greatest. It depends on which which kind of version of Shara's color scheme you like. Then we've got runner E1 and E2, which is all of our parts for the piping. And yeah, as you can see, it's in that kind of standard Shara's salmon-y pink color. So this one, again, is one of those runners where you just kind of break it apart and these will just fit on top of each other like like that, something like that, and then your your parts are like already connected and you can just clip them off. You don't have to do that, but the same thing goes for these runners here. F1 and F2 can also be folded over on top of each other, but there is poly caps that are meant to go inside, so do make sure you put those in before you don't get the kit and just like immediately you just flip that on top of each other, because like I said, these parts are kind of difficult to pry apart, so save yourself the headache, follow the instructions and put in the poly caps first. You have two of this F1 and F2 runners for the uh, ankle joints, the hip joints, the knee joints, and the elbow joints. Runner G here is an ABS plastic. Here we have our part separator as well as some other parts that go inside those joints. So again, make sure you, you put these in with the poly caps and everything before you put those joints together. And we do have two of this runner, so you will have two part separators. Keep one and give one to a friend. And here we've got runners H1, H2, and H3 all together here. You can see H2 and H3 are the separated part. Those, again, are meant to be folded on top of each other. There's just more parts there for the piping, I think, just for the legs. As the rest of these parts are just all for the legs, arms, hand covers. You can see on there just a whole bunch of pink parts. And so we do have two of this big, huge runner. Runner I is the pieces for our shoulder armor here, uh, two parts there for the spike shoulder armor. Again, you'll have a seam line going down through the middle of those. And then for the shield, and then runner J is just our four huge parts for the lower legs, which you will just sandwich together there. You will have a seam line on those as well, uh, which on the front is a little bit hard to get rid of because you have this little detail. I'm not sure how well you can see that. This little detail on the front of the shin. So while you have to like get rid of the seam line here, which is right in the middle, and you have to sand that, it's going to be really hard not to sand away this little detail, which is right next to there as well. So uh, on my kit that I did before, I ended up just sanding that off, just doing away with that. I think if you want to remove the seam line, it's just gonna be really hard to sand that without sanding this away, so you're better off just getting rid of that, and if you want it there, just add it back again with a little piece of plop plate or something on to add it onto there again later. Runner K is our black part, which is just a very, it's a black, light black, very dark gray color here for the top and bottom of the feet, well, kind of parts of the feet, and then the elbow and the knee there as well. So of course we do have two of this K runner. And then we've got runner L for just all the parts for the Zaku machine gun, that's all contained here on the L runner. And then runner M is our hand parts and parts for the heat hawk. So the heat hawk as well, you're gonna have to remove a seam all the way down that side of that. And then for hand parts, you've got two closed fists and two holding hands. So those will be used for either the heat, uh, heat hawk or the rifle or the machine gun, I should say. And that's it. So that is gonna be it for the unboxing, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your questions and comments down below. I'll get this snapped up and I'll do the review for you. And we'll, obviously, I don't have the original kit anymore to be able to compare it, but the review is gonna be pretty quick. You guys should know what to expect. It's, it's virtually the same kit. So I'll have that up for you guys next. And then I'll be working on this in secret until it's done. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time.